What's happening? Welcome to On The One. We're gonna talk today about Look At Me featuring Alan Stone. If you're not familiar with it, here's what it sounds like. This is a tune that originally started with a demo that Cody Fry sent me. Cody sent me this like eight bar loop and was like, I don't know, I don't know if this works for my record. Are you feeling this? Yeah, I'm feeling it. I know exactly what to do with this. Send me your logic session. So he sent me his session. I built a bunch of stuff around it, built some rhythm section stuff, a couple different sections, sat on it for a while. It's like, do you wanna sing on it? He's like, I don't know. And then it was just kind of, he was working on his, al his album and he was busy and Alan Stone and I had been talking for years about doing something together and finally it was like, hey, Alan, here's four or five demos. Do you like any of these? And it was the one of the extra stuff I put on Cody's original demo. He's like, whoa, what's that one? It's like, all right, let me clean this one up, button this one up a little bit, give it a little more form, send it to you. He took it, literally sent me all of these vocal tracks back a mere days later. All layers, all the parts, all the lyrics. There was two lyric changes that we made. I just said, hey, can you change these things? And can you change these notes to this, this, this? He just went back, punched those little spots in, sent it back, it was great. I think he actually recorded this in his hotel room on tour. Wow. The internet's amazing, dude. All this gear you have is completely worthless. All you I need agree. is an Apollo and, uh, By and the a way, laptop. None of it's hooked up, so. Yeah, it doesn't look like <laughs> it. <laughs> we're here at Strawberry Studios. John Fields mixed this tune and we're gonna get into it because I sent it to him as good as I could mix which was maybe 80% of the way, but that extra 20% is why he makes the big bucks. Let's take a look at what kind of tracks we're dealing with here. We have Michael Bland on the drums. We did one take. That's the Michael Bland way. He's just got it. And what else we got? We have some percussion stuff, some Oliver stuff. Everybody's into Oliver right now. I'm guilty too. Nice loops on Splice and whatnot. Seth Tackerberry on bass. Ooh, ooh, Great ooh. bass track on this one. Arpeggio guitar bus. I did five arpeggio guitars. All these guitars working together to kind of create one thing, like a guitar orchestra of arpeggios. And then I did another version of five guitars being pulses to kind of create one thing. And then I just did regular guitar comping. The string stuff is from Cody's original demo. I took the MIDI and put it through some other thing, added some other synths. Oh! Alex Bone also added a, a couple extra things. We were hanging out in the studio one day. I was like, eh, can you add a little thingies here and there? So we added some stuff that was cool. Piano is Cody Fry. Horns, got the classic horn head sound here. We got Steve Strand on trumpet, Michael Nelson on trombone and horn arrangement, Kenny Holman on tenor. And then we got a lot of different vocal tracks. The way that we organized it is basically lead vocals and ad libs are one bus. There's background vocal ensemble is another, and then there's another background vocal ensemble and another. Alan did a lot of layers. I'm guessing he recorded it into Logic because when you export on Logic, everything is stereo. Right, but they're mono tracks. But they're mono tracks. Actually, if I remember, they might have something on them. No, reverb, I don't think so. Then that's going through an all, all the vocals are going through an all vocal bus. Then we go in through our classic mix bus. I can see this right now when we get to it. Sorry, I turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> John and I always argue. I always like to have the Wolf Comp and the Oxford Limiter on the master bus. And when John mixes, he just decides whether to keep them on or off and send it to me. And I guess he won this battle. Didn't really need it. Fair, I love this mix. This is one of my favorite mixes you've ever me done too. for me. All right, let's dive into it. Let's, let's take a listen to the drums. Michael Bland, come on. So, this is a four on the floor song, kind of. Yeah, So, ish. And because of it, there can be some flamming between, I don't care who drums, how great they are, there can be some flamming between kicks and snares. Yeah. So I, I can't tell if I moved it or not, but I think I'm just using the sample on the kick drum. You can see that I muted the ah, two. Ah, we got a trigger. 
Trigger warning. We got a trigger. But that means Sue me. That, you know, when Sue me. There's a, if there's ever a. If, when there's ever a. That's uh, nice, though. Flam between kick and snare, you can move the kick if you need to. And I think I might have done that a few times. We're getting into edit land. That's but a dangerous place to be. It's just, uh, you know, back in the day, you would just leave it with all the flamming, but now you can actually fix that stuff. So I do. Um, trigger warning number two. Looks like we got a snare trigger. Actually, ooh, that's. Uh, which one is that? B snare Ludwig 6.5. Direct overhead. I think it might be the Patrick Carney uh, Black Keys guy plug in pack for snare, I think. And of well, course, I don't care if there's a trigger or not. Those drums sound dull. And there's a reverb on that trigger snare, and I believe it is Seventh Heaven. Right there underneath it. Yeah. Snare played, because why not? Now, John does this thing with the drums where he sends all the drums to two different drum buses. One that's kind of crushed and then one that's dry, so it's a parallel compression thing, and then it goes through a Well, in this case, a it's a, there's, a Volf, there's a Volf on it. You can see it's really chomping it up, too. It sounds great without the Volf comp, but still, it pulls all that stuff right I, here. I just heard a, a flam between kick and snare, but I'm just saying, it exists. It does exist. But when the track, you don't hear it. Like turn that eighties verb up. You got a, a kick lot. you got a kick verb, yeah, dude? Just jank it. Even more. Yeah, Prince. That's that sound. Yeah. What is that? Just a gated kind of That's how you get that sound? I mean it was just like here's here it's muted. Well it just sounds like nineteen eighty six. Just tucked in there. That's yeah. cool, dude. 80 spaces. Yep. Great Man, you plugin. got like every plugin in the world. I don't have them all, but I do have a lot. I wish I had less. Yeah. And I just bought another one last night. So, you know, and, then, <laughs> and I'll buy another one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So. My God, where should I even get started? That bass part is so dope. Totally. But we got to go down in order. Let's take a look at what we got for percussion here. This is just some some cute little tingies that I put in there just to just to add some stuff. Yeah. Here's the same section. It's the sort of thing that you might not notice. If you're just listening, but now that I've isolated it, it's like, oh yeah, there it is. It's fun little, fun little stuff to add. Just adds little textures, little bit of excitement throughout the tune. Just on the chorus, looks like. Yeah, just on the chorus, and then there's just like a shh. Just this little. Yep, makes all the difference. I mean, I think that's why this is gonna win a Grammy. That track right there. Yeah. That sucker that I pulled in from a splice pack from Oliver. By the way, who's Oliver? Yeah. He's dope. I, everybody else probably knows him. I'm going to get roasted in the comments for not knowing who he is, but this cat's got some stuff. Tell you what's not edited is this bass track. Look at that. Oof. But that's the feel. That's the feel. That's the feel. Let's isolate this, because this... Oh, you know I'm down with the phaser these days. I'm obsessed with phaser right now. That does sound like a flat wound bass, but I don't, I don't know what it is. Let's let's go dry. Let's see what's going on. And it's definitely busting up. That's you. I didn't do that. That's too That's complex. Me. Too complex for me. I'm adding some of the dart All frequencies, those... the dart mid range in there. I think after it, just a Wolf, just giving it some punch. Lots of attack. Some punch and crunch, if you will. This, Jack told me he uses this on Joe Dart's bass a lot. The lots of attack. You can hear it. It's 
cool. Just tucked in there. It's it's mixed in 40%. And you got this is all you, baby. I know this. Yeah. It's just kind of controlling. And then I think I wanted some extra bottom back, so I put an R base at the end. Just super subs. What does R base do? Renaissance base. It's like a sub adder. Adds sub. So if you you know set oh, that to whatever number that is, is that is what it does. What was it at? Sorry, I just I don't completely know. roasted down that. there. Somewhere down in there. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And then I just blindly just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That gets one. sent out into that phaser bus, which has that decap. Yeah, so let's let's um decapitator. That we never use, but you love that one. I love this plugin, dude. When it's red, you're like, whoa, what's happening? Because it's in uh, phaser mode or? I love phaser. It's pretty slow. But it definitely adds a little yeah. movement. There's something about when I put the phaser just on the bass, even if it's mixed low, it just doesn't do the same thing as if I send it right. as a bus. And then one thing I like to do, especially on bass, if there's certain things that are affected, I use the mono below, so that way anything low yeah. frequency just stays in the middle. Especially sometimes these effects yeah. bring the bass wide, which I love bass being wide, but I only I only want the high frequencies right. wide. Everything else I want focused in the center, keeps the, the thump down the middle. That's a dope bass part. What's going on in the verse there? Let's listen to that. I'll move that one a little rushy. Moved a couple guys there. But left a bunch of stuff too. Man. Yeah, I know, listening on its own, it's like, ah, that could be tightened, but yeah. nah. No, not in the mix. Nah, it's cool. Now these are some crazy guitars right here. Yeah. Live Wong plugins. Dude. Not to, you know, self-promote, uh, but. If you're not hip to the Archetype Corey Wong plugin, go smash that link below right <laughs> now. This is the guitar tone. They're all just this. Default preset. Default. Default. And what was your, what are you plugging this through? Your uh, universal audio? Yeah, I probably just went straight into my Apollo. I'm sure I did. Taking some low end out. Then I got this transient master where I take out the sustain. That's how it gets that. It just like it removes some of that sustain with a limit button on. I don't know. It makes a difference. I think that's just how it default. I I didn't even notice that. And then all that goes to a subgroup. That goes to a subgroup. Kind of taking some of that click out, believe it or not. Yeah, taking some of the click out and then adding more back with. <laughs> then the lots of attack. So yeah. here it is. Here it is without the lots of attack. It, this does make a big difference. I mean, it's That's punchier. To me. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's punchier and it's just, it just puts it right there. This guy, this is where it's really interesting, the pulsing one. So they're like, they're, they're kind of like that reggae, like where's the one? Three, one, two, a three, four. So there's like some sort of side chainer that's yes. breathing. And I did. Okay, yeah, those guys are... Okay, so it's basically this. So what I did is I recorded these five guitars, and it's basically the same thing as the arpeggio ones, but they're going through their own pulse bus. Now I'll take all the stuff off the pulse bus. Taking out some low end. Aggressive gate. This is just to kind of give it a little bit of a pan, panner, slow, slow auto pan. Okay. I love this plug in the trim cutter. And then this is the side chain thing. This is the this is the real sauce on this track. And for good measure, just 
little more compression. It kind of brings up the quiet stuff. Yeah. And then more. That's adding some. I did another side chain thing. This is um, now this is side chain to the kick. Right. This was the trem control is just a, a tempo map one. Now this one adds a little bit more. But it's basically turning off the ones. Yeah. Just makes it way funkier. Looks like you had a seventh heaven on there that you tried to slip in I that I tried probably... it. I think it was a bad idea. You could turn it on <laughs> to see what it was. Yeah, what was it? Yeah. It's like a room. It's better when it's right there. Totally. Now here's just my classic guitars. Are those just DI, you think? I don't know, let me see. There's no plugins. No, that's not DI. You know what I think they are is, I think it is, um, I think I recorded these into Logic because the original demo is in Logic. I think this, that sounds to me like the Clean Machine amp out of the Archetype plugin. Okay. It's like the kind of JC120 twins type thing. And then all the guitars go into an all guitar bus. Mostly so when you send me, can stem it out. Yeah. It just makes it easier. And you can turn, and you can turn all the guitars down real easy. Sure. Or up. Well, let's see what's going on with the synths here. These are kind of fun. That's great. Two five. Minor two fives, friends. Then this is Cody's original. He loves that orchestra stuff. He's so good at it, dude. That's gotta be like Spitfire or something. His yep. orchestra stuff sounds so good. That is good. I got this octave blips patch and logic that I use all the time. Just to give this little undercurrent of like a... Yep. And it's doing a little traveling, I think, with the trim. Yeah. Slow auto pan, yes. You got to turn the noise off, though. Always on that one. Noise Which is off. off. I'm not sure why you would want the noise, but... I don't know. I don't know why that's the default. Here's oh. Alex Bones synths that he added. That's quality. That's nice. He's into all that stuff. He's good at it. Sounds like Scritty Politti. He called it Prince Piano. Yeah. Like he's playing I Wanna Be Your Lover. Uh, this this arpeggio thing right here is cool. That's like got the shaka. Yeah. Vitals. This whole song is kind of like. Check my mm -hmm. Cuts really hard when the vocal hits. This has got to be Cody's piano. really punches it in the sad whirly preset sad whirly dude it really adds punch i mean this is kind of like the funky part of the song and that's what makes the rhythm yeah let's listen to it in context now really it works mostly in tandem with those standard guitars I guess the first one, he's not moving an IM, but whatever. Hey. Little things you find afterwards, huh? I think that's supposed to be on at seven. Oh, yeah. Oh. Not really doing anything. Doing a little bit. 
horns. This is the horn heads are clean, dude. The horn heads are clean, dude. That might be uh Seventh Heaven might be on that. A and M Chamber B, the Carpenters. See, I I always put little plate, but you replace it. This just needs a little slap. Yeah. Verb. Just a little more than dry. Whoa. That trombone note. That's so good. can go sample that and put that in their songs. Automated that reverb. Yep. I like that. Horn heads, dude. All right, let's get into Alan's vocal. The lead verse. So it's... Oh my God, where should I even get started? You stopped. Looked at me just once in not in Electrified inside of my body The wild card Playing visual volley He's got such a swagger to his voice, dude So good, so good He's so dope, dang Then in the choruses, it was just basically a group vocal That was then supplemented by background vocals There's something about the way you look at me there's something about you nobody can see, baby. There's something about the way. There's something about the way. Oh, body. Can't only like you, honey. Yeah, it's so not funny. Whoa, cause there's something about the way. There's something about. I remember originally the main lead chorus. Something about you nobody can see, baby. I doubled it, but I added the um I just copied it down and I added that that an octave up. There's something about you nobody can see, baby. There's something about the way. Just to give it Yep. There's something about you nobody can see, baby. There's something about the way. There's something about the way. Oh, body. Kendo. It's just tucked in there. Slightest. Just to give it a, I don't know, it just yeah. makes it a little synthy or something. And then his other background vocals are cool. There's something about you nobody can see, baby. There's something about the way. There's something about the way. Nobody can go me like you, honey. Definitely some, you know. So yeah, some of the notes are like, yeah. is that the one? But it kind of doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. In this context, it totally doesn't matter. It's it's so dope. Just awesome. He's so dope. He's this swagger in his voice is is so cool. The ad libs add this this fun thing too in the verses where it's not for a million miles, just for that innocent smile. Somebody better check my vitals. Not for a million miles, just for that innocent smile. Somebody 
million miles Just for that innocent smile Somebody be to check my vitals Check Somebody check my vitals Not for a million miles Just for that innocent smile Somebody be to check my vitals Yeah, he, he did a a bunch of ad libs through the whole song that were cool and I wanted to keep them all. But then it was like, all right, it's a little too much. I just got to, you know, where it's like you get something. It's like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. But then in the end, it's like, oh, maybe it's too much of it. You just got to have a tasteful amount of it. And it was it was great. I love the way that he sang this. And then the John Fields mix master bus here. Let's just let's go down. People need to know what it sounds like without the plugins. Add a little bright. Add a little more bright. Add something. Add the tape machine just for whatever. The ML4000, this does the most work. And then the wall at the end, just to give that tune i was really stoked about this one yeah. i actually cody got in a little bit of an argument with me when when i first sent him alan's stuff because he's like dude the vocal needs to be thinner it needs to be falsetto it needs to have this like that's how i was imagining it i was like i don't disagree your version is amazing he was like well what if you use my vocal in the chorus and alan's and the others and it, i it was cool but in the end he was finally like you know what i was just i had demo this this is dope what am i talking like this is Great. I was just hearing it in my head for so long this way. And um, Cody and Alan, both incredible writers, super fun to work on this with them. And uh, yeah, just perfectly cast, bland on drums, really great. Seth on bass. I mean, the Wong guitars, it's, it's magic. Thank you. And of course, the John Fields mix to top this thing off. I tell you what, this song did not sound this good when it was my mix. And we got there. How many how many mixed revisions did we do on this one? That's actually, I'd like to see that. Three days worth. Well, it looks like we had 128, 29, 29, 8. So we have mix one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mixes. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. See, some people, I've had some people mix stuff for me where it's like, it doesn't even start sounding good or how I intentionally thought of it. Or even like the session that I sent over like, okay, if you just started with what I sent over, you'd have a good idea of what how I'm hearing it. I've had some stuff, some stuff I sent to other mixers that had never made it on albums, where it's like, it's not even mix five until it sounds kind of like what I'm, why? Are you somebody, if somebody sends you, if like a producer sends you a Pro Tools session and you're hired to mix it, are you scrapping everything? Or are you just- No, I generally start with what they got, um, unless there's just crazy, stuff going on and I just need to simplify it, or that I disagree with with it or yeah you know. but yeah most of the time you know I just do my thing but our thing is kind of similar so yes hey if you're not familiar Greasy Meal one of the dopest bands to ever come out of Minneapolis the Strawberries guitar John produced mix played guitar in that band this is the Greasy Meal guitar <sighs> that band is so sick it's the Fender Strawberries you got to get hip. Greasy meal. I actually, I see people at festivals all the time. They're like, you're from Minneapolis? Dude, you ever hear a greasy meal? I'm like, yeah. But it's like, there's some underground, there's some underground chatter that continues on. Yeah, there's some, you know, some very famous band members in that, in that band, so. There is. That's the cliffhanger for you to now go do your homework. Now you can figure that out. Thanks for hanging with us. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Cool. Peace. Hey.